everyone, Michael Phoenix here, founder of the magazine. Normally, you hear me upbeat, you know, hey, you know, charged up and everything. But I'm here on, you know, you really can't tell, here on Main Street, heading towards Broad in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Um, on this side of Broad Street for a change for a reason. Tonight, on April 12th, 2016, Moravian College, students from Moravian College, joined together with other members, some members of the community, and did their sixth annual Take Back the Night. Take Back the Night, I believe, originally started as a march and rally against domestic violence, and it grew to, to be a march and rally against all violence. And normally, I have no problem keeping the personal separate from Valley in the magazine. But this one was personal for me. Because I am also a survivor of a violent crime. <clears throat> didn't have, you know, they had an open mic portion. And I didn't feel like it was my place because I wasn't a student. You know, and I wanted other people to share their stories. But <clears throat> the last week of August in 2010, I was living in a hotel in Fayetteville, North Carolina after the place I worked at closed the plant down. Two people who I thought were friends were actually drug addicts and needed <clears throat> a place to hang out for a couple hours. Okay, not a problem. Had a bad feeling about it, but no big deal. Well, I, you know, then you know, I was getting my unemployment check and everything. And I remember being on the phone, on my phone, on the internet, you know, checking things out. I was uh, definitely going to be leaving just Tampa, Florida, or Lehigh Valley, not sure which one. The next thing I know, the guy's fist is coming in my face. Pretty much about the only thing I remember from that attack was screaming for my life. And acting like a little child, begging for my life, and for them not to kill me. I also remember being forced to leave the room after at least an hour. I don't even remember how long it was. And then being forced to act like it was normal. It was a male and a female. Everything was normal. I'd go to the ATM across the street, pull out the rest of my unemployment. I tried to leave enough money in there so I could take the bus back up here. But, you know, my only thought while this was happening was just please let me get through this alive. I'm, I'm leaving. Period. You know. Well, they needed to see the receipt and when they saw I left 100 in my account, forced me to pull out the rest of it. They said that if I would tell the police that they knew people, and if they got arrested, they knew people, and I'd be dead. They would have me killed. I was so terrified that this happened a block away from, this, from the state police station on Highway 301. Even the next day, I actually, I believe, <clears throat> I didn't even go to a hospital because I would have told them what happened. And I had a broken nose, a couple of bruised ribs, felt like. The next day I went to stop by a friend's shop, and I was so terrified of what they or people that they know would do, that <clears throat> uh, that the cop told me, you know, they both told me, look, we can keep you safe. I said, no. I said, I can't do it. I remember going back to the room the next day and seeing the blood from apparently from my nose and in the room and everything destroyed. Almost everything I had destroyed. For five years, for almost five years, I had blamed myself not for the attack. I mean, I was my own stupidity for trusting them. Not for the attack, but I kept thinking to myself, if they hurt anyone else, it was on me. it's my fault that I didn't have the courage to try to stop them. 
Mm -hmm. It took. I finally realized that there was nothing I could have done. That I did the right thing. No matter, you know, people told me it's not your fault. It's not your fault. You couldn't have done anything. You know, you did what you had to to survive it. Well, <coughs> you know, I still have my doubts about that, but it's in the past. When I came back, even though it was 550 miles away, I was stayed in a hotel, a little cheap hotel here. Okay, I'm here. I'm here in Lehigh Valley. Grew up here. Know a lot of people. I'm safe. Two months afterwards, I was still having flashbacks. Tried to tell people, you know, didn't help. But the reason why I'm telling you this is because those at the, at the actual rally, as soon as the lights went down, for a third year in a row, my camera went off. Because I respect the private, I respect the people and the courage that it takes to get up on a stage like that and tell their story. I respect the courage that it takes to run the risk of having possibly telling, doing something like that and possibly having flashbacks. Okay? <coughs> so, you saw the march, camera went off. But basically, to give you a quick rundown of the march and rally and how important it is not only for, for schools to do, but how important something like this is for politicians to pay attention to, for the media, even CNN and the major networks to give this media, things like this media attention, okay? These students, and I said this be, you know, during the march, they could be doing anything, anything at all. These students took their time to say enough. We're, ta we're taking back, we, we want our streets safe. We want our campus safe. We will not live in fear. The night is no, no longer belongs to the people that want to hurt others. The night does not belong to the criminals. The night belongs to us. And just the rush I get even now of thinking about just watching this and being there for the third year in a row it can't be described. And the other reason why the camera went off, some things, some things are meant to be experienced and not captured. And especially when they had, they actually moved in indoors this year, which was smart because it's actually kind of cold out here and don't have to worry about the wind or anything. <coughs> they had cutouts, faceless cutouts, of men and women with a story on each one, life size. And they, everyone formed it in a circle and lit a candle. And there was a moment of silence for the people who could not be there. The moment of silence was for the vi victims, the survivors, the people who, who died in domestic violence and all forms of violence. For at least one night out of every year, the students of Moravian College do take, take the night back and make it theirs. We need to do this across our country and across the world. Things like prejudice, discrimination, violence. We're in 2016, everyone. Let's start making a better. Let's start making the world a better place. And these students set set an example that most adults can't even come close to. So, from the Atlanta bus terminal, main bus terminal, over here in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, just off Broad in Maine, the magazine sponsors. I say this every time and I mean it like you will not believe. Thank you for everything. For the people, people and businesses who financially sponsor the magazine, thank you. This whole thing never would have even come remotely this far without you. The 
people in support of Alan and Beyond and other ways to check out the articles and etc. Without you, there wouldn't be a point for all this. So, Michael Phoenix from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Get back tonight. Follow each other. See you around. Later.